Okay. Uh, so I've, I've, over the last couple of months, uh, received uh, from a dear heart student, severe uh, and incessant requests for um, to do some uh, teachings and uh, initiations on White Mahakala. So um, this is how it could roll out, you know. When, when um, these wonderful teachers come, of course, I've been always trying to prepare people for um, the uh, ceremonies, and I think we've done a good job, and then uh, have people do the practice um, uh, afterwards, if they like to do it, um, or at least, you know, keep their mantra um, uh, samayas. So one way, ancient way I did it with my root teacher was, you know, you get teachings on on like white ma kala, and then um, you get um, like a longer reading transmission, and then um, which somewhat public, but then uh, the impairment itself um, is kind of secret, you see. <clears throat> um, so there's kind of a uh, a step process like that. Um, um, that's because uh, uh, by the time you take uh, an impairment, we call it, um, you don't want to break Samaya, you see. So the Samaya is very strong. So I have very strong Samaya with my students here, which is really fantastic. That's why we can do what we do here. Um, strong bond, really strong connection is Samaya. So um, I'm delighted to have those. Uh, you know, it's it's a compliment to say uh, severe and insistent requests, right? You have to be a little bit desperate to to actually um, be free, don't you think? Yeah. So so we'll come back to that. But today, um, I just want to put that out there in the mandala. We're here to talk about mandalas, and this is, um, as I said earlier, the ten o'clock meditation mandala month. Something like that. <laughs> so, uh, Geshe Sewang and other Geshe's will be um, uh, at Spiritual Life Center this week, correct? Yeah. Um, uh, and then the week after, two weeks like here to do Medicine Buddha. <clears throat> and some other things in between. Um, I'm particularly fond of Geshe Sewang. Um, he uh, has a very balanced energy of being introvert, extrovert kind of person, very friendly um, and, and very powerful. So, um, you know, I've wanted people to come and see San Mandala and see it being constructed and, and get the energy and um, go home with some sand too, but also go home with some blessings and um, receive some teachings from Geshe Sewang. So I asked him to do also like um, a Medicine Buddha mandala here and then do the Medicine Buddha initiation too. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. So uh, he, as we know, he is um, one of the main teachers in Ladakh which is in India, but is still like culturally Tibetan. So uh, we have a strong connection. It is a fundraiser. So um, we will be, um, you know, supporting the, the school for the kids. So um, I'm really looking forward to um, his visit and I'll probably see him maybe Tuesday night, Wednesday, something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like that. The uh, um, uh, neat thing about mandalas is it's our Vajrayana way, particularly of uh, teaching and realizing uh, interdependence. So I uh, want people to have that as a basic framework. There are many ways uh, that uh, are synonyms for interdependence. Um, 
uh, emptiness, short, <laughs> easier to say, um, nature of mind. They all have a little different flavor, don't they? Do you think they're separate things? Can't be. Yeah, ultimate truth, nature of mind, interdependence. <clears throat> So depending upon what we need to hear in the moment um, from ourselves, from the environment, from the mandala, we'll hear interdependence, or we might hear nature mind, or we might hear just dharmata, the truth. So these, these are not separate things, but um, they're drawing attention to different aspects of reality, don't you think? <clears throat> An important one, uh, that's really um, defines Vajrayana is, is, of course, um, the use of mandalas and uh, mandala energy like that. Um, some people historically have defined Vajrayana as um, uh, characterized of by Didi Yoga, you know, um, Lama Sakapa particularly said, oh, Didi Yoga and uh, the union of bliss and wisdom. So obviously that's also a defining characteristic. Um, some people have defined Vajrayana um, through like a Dzogchen kind of approach, like um, complete natural liberation or self-liberation, whatever. But uh, for our purposes uh, with this temple and the world, uh, it can be very helpful to understand the nature of mandalas and how energy manifests. Seeing the nature mind um, is fairly easy. <laughs> Seeing interdependence is fairly easy um, <clears throat> compared to what? Well, compared to running administrative meetings. <laughs> okay, so it's really kind of easy to see. Okay, just by ourselves in the quiet of our own meditative samadhi and a nice place where, okay, I, I see nature mind. I, I feel interdependent with everything. I feel luminosity and clarity of emptiness. And um, great. But then, um, there's all the stuff we have to do in our daily life. And then there's um, uh, people we love and have to work with that we also have some conflicts with. And then there's all the junk going on in the world, right? So um, the teachers in the past and currently uh, understand this. So um, when we're talking about the full realization of Buddhahood, it's about both absolute and relative realities um, skillful means and uh, deep insight coming together. And it's difficult, don't you think? So um, when, uh, you know, I'm meeting with the wonderful teachers, um, just uh, yesterday, uh, Kenshin Ribshe um, drove up from the Bay Area to uh, have Autumn work on uh, a documentary for his um, monastery in Amdo. Um, does anybody remember what his monastery's name was? Autumn, you should know. What? <laughs> Patty. Hashi Techuling. What's the translation? Okay, and what's Techo mean? Come on, scholars. Mahayana, the Mahayana Dharma, the big, the big picture, right? So, um, but you know, we're we're not talking about you know like, um, you know, Rinpoche. What's emptiness? What's your understanding? This is my, you know. No, we're just saying how how do we how do we create an environment where 
um, people can can understand how to live and work together and and um, uh, experience joy working with each other, right? How can we create real community? That's what's really unique about um, the movie that uh, Autumn's going to put together. Sure, I mean, even like 15, 20 minutes takes like months to put together, right? <clears throat> I've I've seen portions of the movie already, and um, it's uh, and and some is on his website because they have a um, website Tashi Tetraling. Um, but it's uh, uh, it isn't about just monasteries or community. It's how the, uh, it all works together and creates this sense of um, flow and joy and energy. So I'm sure that'll be done very quickly. Um, because it's of utmost importance, and um, I'd like to, uh, you know, it's a it's a professional job, so um, you know, I'd like to, you know, put a shout out for. I'm I'm always going to raise money for everything, you know, but a shout out to raise money for that, you know. Um, there's more than it's more than a volunteer job, don't you think? Let's be real. It's more, you know, this is, we're just talking mandala. I'm talking living mandala is like I recognize the connection we have to have. We have to keep our uh, support, right? So when we're talking about white mahakala, we're talking about, you know, right livelihood, right? Talking about right livelihood, we're talking about interdependence, right? We're talking about interdependence, we're talking about liberation. When we're talking about liberation, we're talking about complete luminosity, right? Can't be separate, you know? No, when we're but you know the, there's slightly different aspects because when we're talking about ear, we can't just talk about separate ear. Ear doesn't make you know any sense other than the body, except for like Van Gogh or something, right? So you know when we're talking about arm, arm has to be connected with body. So when we say different words, there's slightly different aspects, isn't that so? But um, and we we want to make sure that we have a full model. In other words, we cover the whole thing. So. Um, the movie won't just be, okay, this is about Tashi uh, uh, Chik It's It would be also an educational um, documented teaching for us as well, you know, like that. So I, I texted um, Kenshin Roshan the other day, I kind of like, oh, okay, okay. And I said, oh, well, I'll go to Amdo with you. <laughs> so, like, ah. so, ah. so Amdo is like, um, uh, the you know eastern part of Tibet, very uh, most close to China, like that. So um, Rimshay has to be very careful how he, the movie is. So it could be shown in China because they can't like totally like trash the Chinese. So uh, that um, <clears throat> that's part of Mandala too, like that sensitivity to cause and effect. And that's understanding like, what's the use for this thing? That's the mandala principle. What's it being used for? Where's it going? Where Where is it connected to? I'm trying to give like a mandala talk that isn't just theory, I'm trying to talk weave in. Do you see him? Does it make sense? You know, these practical things and then pointing out, okay, this mandala. <clears throat> like that. Uh, like Ken Shurimshi a lot. He's, uh, you know, He'll just drive up here on his own. That's kind of cool, right? You know, we like driving teachers too, but sometimes, you know, it's like we don't have time and he'll just drive himself up, right? You know, so I, I had to like, um, you know, he he comes, you know, as he's in pro, he comes to me offering kata, right? He comes to me offering kata. So then I go, okay, this is great. But so, uh, I said, like, Patty, we got to give him some, you know, gas money. <laughs> he goes, no, I don't want anything. I go, no, and this way you got to be a little New York pushy. Because, it, it, of course, he's going to say, no, I'm, I'm good. But, you know, I know we had to give him some gas money, right? That's important. That. And um, whenever we invite, like, a uh, teacher, Lama Monk, then um, we also... Lunch is expected, right? So we give them lunch, right? Yeah, it's it's kind of Italian. You just can't send them home without feeding them first, you know. 
like that. So he's a good eater, right? I mean, he's, he's trying to be healthy. But that, that worked out pretty well, you know. Yeah. Like, I guess he, like Lou Ramsey, yeah, he wasn't afraid to go, yeah, can I have a little bit more of this? You know, when people are too shy, they, they'll go, oh, no, I'm good. You know, but I'll say, you know, okay, I'll have another sandwich. So that's good. Yeah. So the Mandala principle, um, <clears throat> you know, is also a title of a book that uh, the Vidyadra Trungpuram shape put together that, that I do recommend, you know. Um, what I like about um, Trungpuram Shea's books is like, um, you know, 50 years later, they still sound pretty good, right? That's, that's kind of amazing, right? Because most of the stuff, you know, we're, we're reading, um, contemporary, we're thinking it's, it's going to, it's not going to sound that great in 50 years. I don't know. I hope my book still sounds great in 50 years. Don't you, Jen? Yeah. We, we, we do have some chat books today, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So the, um, the thing that I heard back in the seventies that was, uh, really, uh, outrageous at the time was, um, another title of his books, but he first would say it like orderly chaos. The uh, Vajrayana idea is um, really outrageous and it's hard to see, but uh, even in the most uh, crazy, chaotic, and horrible circumstances, uh, there's some intelligence operating that we can always connect with. That's the most important piece from today. Because the, the, the tendency, particularly now in the world, particularly now in, in America, is to really, you know, be us and them, right? So it's really hard to say, like, even in someone we really disagree with, that there's, there's, there's still some intelligence there, right? There's always intelligence there. And that, that feels kind of outrageous because if we think of people who are, that we think are really horrible or wicked, we usually are like, they're totally trash, right? There's no point in dialoguing whatsoever, right? When I was um, studying with uh, Suzaki Roshi um, and living at a Zen monastery, uh, he would go on and on about Hitler. Um, you know, it's like, of course, he lived through World War II and, and the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all that. But he'd go, you know, like, um, if, if you're enlightened, you could kiss Hitler, you know, like that. <clears throat> it's totally different than the normal kind of Zen. Usually Zen's just kind of Mahayana, a little flat. And he was a very tantric kind of uh, Zen teacher. Um, so that was kind of, you know, there was... Uh, you know, it'd be talking about Hitler and stuff, and, and uh, you know, a lot of Jewish students, Leonard Cohen was sitting there, you know, and I was thinking, okay, why don't you want you to shut up? Um, this is, and you get to the point, it's like too much, just, just, just stop it. Um, but part of the uh, point of the mandala in Vajrayana, um, secondly, is um, it's to train you to work with overwhelm. To train you to work with overwhelm. So first we sit, we're noticing how intelligence is operating in the mandala, how our intelligence is present, how we can intelligently deal with even the most extreme states. <clears throat> That's really important. And then what's the second thing, John? The 
just one 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 minute ago. I said, well, that's the first thing, and then what's the other important thing to know about mandalas? This is very Sarajay, by the way. Teachers will just stop and they'll go, what did I just say? And okay. So it's like there's even in the most crazy situation, you know, there's orderly, there's some there's something going on, right? That is workable. It's kind of outrageous, you know. So we can we can work with really like awful crazy situations. Mandalas, these are metaphors, um, of course. But uh, when we study, then it becomes we start feeling like a mandala, right? Don't you think? So I'm giving you like a little more time to remember what the second thing. <laughs> Does anybody want to try again? Yes, who said that? What's your name again? Thanks, Amanda. You've saved the day for me. I <laughs> go home discouraged. Amanda did it. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So we we know we're we're going to push you into that. Hopefully, that surfing energy, right? Where you're you're really riding, you know, the edge there. We know we're doing that, but only with your permission. That's. That's the samaya that you know. I'm not pushing in the mandala principle. We don't push anybody off the diving board. But if you say you want to jump off the diving board, we'll take you seriously. People have tested me. <laughs> People in this room can attest that I have tested them. <clears throat> so, what are the two principles? I've had so far. Intelligence and overwhelm. It's training you to overwhelm. There's intelligence going on, and we are training you to uh, deal with what we call overwhelm. It's not real, it's not like breakdown overwhelm, but it's that just that uh, surfing edge, I'm calling it. Mm -hmm. But what would a third principle be? Yeah, yeah inter, I mean, yeah, it's all demonstrating interdependence. Yeah, it's a demonstration of interdependence. That's true. So the practical aspect is, yeah, we look at the intelligence. We, we, you know, we look at the, you know, get you to overwhelm. <clears throat> you know, something like that. What? What more? Balance, yeah, yeah. We like balance is in the middle way, yeah, yeah. Coming to a point. Hmm. Say more about that. Mm. Mm. Center of equilibrium will change wherever you are in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Point, balance. What was the word you used again? Tensegrity. What else? Wholeness? Wholeness, yeah. Yeah, sense of completion. Mm -hmm. Nothing left out. There's also sort of a will that comes 
inner outer and outside is not such a completely separate but always should be. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing is the um the big uh, principle um as we ha we have this power of choice you see we we can take different positions yeah we could say okay i want to i want to be the receiver and then next you could say i want to be the giver i want to be embraced and then i want to feel embracing or i want both at the same time we we have that ability to uh, move around the mandala. Yeah, it's com it's it's complex in a kind of uh, wonderful way that allows us to to make choice. We're freedom. We can say, well, I want to I'm going to move to the center, and now I'm going to move to the edge. I'm going to go in this gate, and then I'm going to go in that gate. But the, there's still some kind of there's some kind of rules about it. It's not like. Um, there's some decorum, as <laughs> Trung Bermashi used to say, but it's that, uh, it's that freedom of, you know, you you could kind of decide, okay, I want to be like kind of stuck here. See, people always think freedom means being unstuck, you know, flowing. No, freedom can also mean I, I'm, a, I'll, I'm willing to be stuck. Because, of course, when people we go, I'm stuck. You never feel like you chose that. It's always you're a victim of being stuck, right? But and we actually chose it. I know it sounds shitty and kind of punishing, but we, we chose it. <laughs> we chose to be stuck. How is that? You know? So I know, you know, you can still bitch about it. It's fine. You can it's okay to bitch up the mountain. You know, it's like I don't like it, and I chose it and I don't like it. I get that feeling all the time. Like, you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> that's also freedom I'm like yeah I, you know so some of my students know I, sometimes I'm running around going I chose all this so like that but that's freedom we chose it that's real karma true karma we chose it so that uh, you're all coming up with good uh, principles you know balance interdependence uh, things <clears throat> complexity. Uh, I really want you to get the idea that and we're choosing it doesn't mean kind of dualistically. It means each moment um, where where the system is totally invested in it, right? Uh, and when you say invested in it, it could be invested in standing back or it could be invested in uh, watching or it could be you know take the dive we're free to do that right mm -hmm. so we have intelligence overwhelm choice uh and uh everything that people have uh mentioned so far as like that uh balanced middle way experience of being uh embraced and embracing at the same time right that's what we want the big piece we want freedom and connection at the same time isn't that it that's bliss that is like wow that's real tashi that's real bliss that's you know mahasuka right you have it all right if you don't want it all don't bother with tantra it will just frustrate you <laughs> you know so we have to say that and that's kind of scary meet with a situation or teacher and you go, okay, I, I want it all. Yeah, of course we love to hear that, but um, we know that that means that sometimes we're gonna have to listen to complaints up the mountain. I you know that's part of my mandala too. Oh, so that's um, uh, really an important part is um, for those people that have, you know, raised, created and raised kids, um, we know that they're not always saying, I appreciate you, daddy and mommy. You've been such wonderful. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to uh, fix my car after I've wrecked it, you know, and stuff like that. <clears throat> so the um, thing I want to go over for the sand model, of course, is, is another basic weird principle um, that... Uh, 
by creating it through mantra, through awareness, and through uh, uh, this design, um, the Buddha devas actually take residence there. You have to leave your scientific reality behind, ladies and gentlemen, to really get into it. Otherwise, it just goes, well, it's an interesting design, and that's symbolic, and then they sweep it away, and that's impermanence, and yeah, I get it. No, that's part of it, but the, the energy, uh, the mantras, the awareness, the design, then um, the Buddha energies uh, take residence there. Just, just like they have in this thing. This is your temporary, this is your rental. Okay, your, your rental <laughs> that you're taking temporary residence in, which is nice. I like to improve my rentals. I like to be nice, but we don't own it, do we? No. So from our point of view, of course, um, looking at uh, highest level teachings, um, the mind and you know, we sometimes separate things into thinking mind is uh, immaterial and material things are material things or mind is uh, has no form and then this form. But as we um, I'll progress, maybe use that word or come to realization, uh, there's no difference between uh, appearance and emptiness or mind and appearance whatsoever. Very strange. Because it feels different, doesn't it? Like, I was like, well, our mind is kind of like, I, I can't say, well, I'm looking at that. I go, that's a rug. And if I said, I'm a rug, <laughs> consistently enough, like, let's say I didn't leave the room. So, Lama, it's, it's, uh, it's over. And I go, well, now I'm still here. And when you go, because I'm a rug, you know, you'd want to take me to Sutter Center for Psychiatry. But um, that's kind of the weird thing is we're, we're completely embedded in the world. That's a big principle. Did you write that down? <laughs> She's just looking at me, like, write it down. Did you write down the other things? <laughs> yeah. So that's the really weird thing is we're completely embedded so this there's, there's some correspondence between you know the um uh, christian idea of incarnation or uh, avatars you know like that like you're completely embedded you know like that um so the, uh that's very important like that's why we, you know in, in the long sadness we do particularly Kala chakra sadness where people are doing mind model is like you're describing all this stuff you know and it's well what's that got to do with mine and they're going well mine is you know the doors are red and the carpet's maroon and well, there are four lights on the chandelier and they're you know these you know four things you know crystals on each light and the light has to you know and you're going what what does this have to do with mind It's just hammering away that you're not going to find mind somewhere else. You're not going to find it somewhere else. You're not going to find it outside, you know. Isn't that weird? It's just weird. At the same time, we're not saying the ultimate nature of the mind is a rug. Because even, does the ultimate nature of mind exist? Please give the right answer so I can sleep tonight. Anybody? No. Can you find the mind if you go looking for it? No. The weird part is we can't use it. It seems very convenient. Yeah. But if we go looking for it as a thing, Go looking for it as a separate thing, we're, we're not going to find it, right? Very strange. 
So now, what are the three principles we've talked about? We could add five, I like interdependence and balance, but what? There's intelligence, training for overwhelm, choice, balance, and then complete immersion. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, kind of, it's like uh, we've disappeared into the world. So it's 11.55, we can have a short discussion. It's been kind of interesting. And then we'll have some, yes. Do you need, you need one of these interdependent devices? <laughs> Okay, so when you talk about intelligence, does that include like wisdom, compassion, and skillful means? Is that would they be in that subcategory, or what? Sure. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Also, stupidity. Yeah, lots of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we, you know, we yeah. go to, you know, highest level tantra, you know, aspect of Chen Mahamudra, you, you know. You have to say that, well, that includes like our st stupid delusional thoughts too. Yeah, thanks. Which is annoying. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, I, I think you can, yeah, not, not really, but um, relatively speaking, it's annoying. Ellen is way, way back there. Thank you, Rinpoche. I've been thinking about administration and chaos and overwhelm. And I sometimes wonder if our ability to cope with uh, overwhelm and chaos in administration leads to a state of not pushing to some fruition on things that are chaotic. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like there's such a sense that we're supposed to withstand the chaos that we don't work to resolve it. Well, that would be a masochistic response. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's uh, things are constantly in waves. So yeah, we do have to keep surfing. We can't just say, uh, uh, we can't just have a masochistic response. A masochistic response means we're just sitting here enduring it, you know? So that that's not the point. The point is you're, you're, you're you're going you're turning into the skid so we have to keep driving yeah so how i guess maybe let me turn it into a mm. productive question how how do we um not get complacent about you know resolving the chaos or not you know not fully resolving in an absolute sense but but skillfully continuing to work through things and just instead just saying well this must be a lesson it just is the way it is yeah, that of course, in a way, those are kind of true from an explanation point of view, but um, in, unless the um, less tantra is brought into administrative things, it tends to deaden. You see, so um, when we're doing uh, the inner yoga practices, um, subtle yogas, you know, the winds, channels, and drops, then then you're energized. So. Um, we can't just say, well, we, we've got to get her done or, you know, the usual kind of fear things or obligation things or even um, moral arguments, uh, you know, to do a certain level of complexity like like this thing, um, you, you have to have the juice. So, the, the, you know, the tantric bodhicitta, the, you know, our, you know, chandali has to be really strong. Because that's what gets you through. It isn't just like, okay, I've got it, you know, moral arguments are good, you know, kind of practical arguments are good. We we need that, a structure, but, um, you know, it's kind of channels for the rivers to flow in. But uh, when we're not doing enough yogic practice, we're not in touch with um, actual energy, then, then there's nothing that can save it. 
because then we're trying to conceptually, you know, kind of make people do things or argue for, we got to get this done. We need this much money and don't get mad. And, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> so so if, if there's enough juice, then um, you can ride the wave. Yeah, and that's helpful. I think sometimes, you know, it's easy for us to mouth the words, but then we yeah. sort of deaden down yeah. to where we're not useful. So I think that's super yeah. helpful to remind, uh, as a reminder for me anyway. Thanks. Yeah, so the the nice thing about the uh, uh, administrative kind of things or tasks is, uh, um, you know, I get to see if people are actually doing the inner yogas. Um, because when we're in ideal situations, like in a retreat or you're just sitting around having dinner, or <laughs> fun things, then of course it always looks like our tantric body cheats up, like you're pretty and I'm pretty and you know it's fun and. <laughs> Course, we're in good moods, you know, like that, you know. But uh, then, in, until you, you know, put, um, you know, people under stress, then you don't know whether they're really juiced, you know. I'm using that in a non addictive way, by the way. So, but <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you, you, you want, you have to um, be sensitive enough, enough awareness to, um, really you know feel like oh there's you know there's that energy right there so right now you know we should be able to feel like of course different elemental energies you know like of course like you know earth element and you know water element and fire element and wind element and space element and consciousness element because they're not that we don't own them so we're calling them elements right or usually we say, you know, my energy is low or my energy is high or I feel good, I feel bad. But, you know, actually to do projects like this, you know, to the lines are and everything, you, you need to be, you know, juiced. You need to be in a non or a transpersonal energy state. Um, otherwise, you know, you're just kind of, um, you, won't, you won't be able to catch your breath like that. So the, the neat thing about like... Um, you know, when uh, uh, like Kenshin Rimshe visits or Jada Rimshe or, um, uh, you know, it's like, they get it. I'm with my bros. You know, it's like, you feel it, right? You know, it's like, okay. So we don't have to talk about it because it's there. It's like the normal, like normal people kind of like, okay, I feel your friendliness or your sexual energy or something and you know but then you can feel that elemental energy and so you know you can accomplish it right so um that's why you know when the teachers come they know we we will accomplish everything we set out to do right there's no there's no doubts right it might take a little bit more time but everything everything we've always set out to do has been accomplished isn't that so yeah so we've got a big thing coming up. We've got the uh, Geshe Sewang, who also has that same kind of juice. It's nice to be around him, you know, and we're doing things at SLC, and Mike Hatfield has it totally under control. <laughs> it's from the heart. The, we were we were right over there last week, and that wasn't good there. You know, they're juiced, okay? That's what I've always liked. You know, they're, they're, they're wacky in a different way than we are. We're wacky too. The wackiness, like new A SLC, but I'm extremely fond of them. And you know, the the their enthusiasm is is what carries it through, right? Because there'd be some when you not only here, but when you go to another, you know, kind of venue, there's always something that goes terribly wrong. <laughs> and you know, the, our job is to like, well, the show must go on. You know, like, um, <laughs> I've told this story before, I think, uh, Michael, appreciate it. So um, years ago, when we did a really large mandala at um, the Episcopal Cathedral here in town, um, you know, I brought in Geshe Gendon to do it, and um, there were supposed to be two other monks. Uh, one from Guto is really a master who ended up doing it, and then one other monk. Well, only only the master from Guto showed up, and um, 
this is when you know I was living you know at the, in the house and I went over there one evening and the power wasn't working so that he was annoyed and so was Geshe Ken and, and he goes I'm done <laughs> and I, I got hold of Geshe Ken and then I said what's going on you know he was staying there too and he goes he won't talk to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're both great. They were both. I mean, that was a, that was the most incredible mandala we've ever done, actually. You know, but you know, um, what do you, what do you think resolved the impasse? What close warm? Come on, let's be practical, folks. It's, mandalas are practical. Huh? Uh, we did get a power back on, actually, and uh, the heater broke down. I'm sorry, it wasn't the power. So I, I bought heaters and brought them over. That did help, but that wasn't the thing that tipped it over. Come on, be practical. Get out of your Dharma heads and. Huh? Wow. There was some laughter. We revised how we cut the money. So, yeah, because the Gutel monk lived in New York, had a lot of high expenses. So I said, look, I'm practical. You're lucky you have a practical teacher. So I said, look, I got with Keshe and, and said, okay, the, the TV shows are coming. The, uh, you know, there were, there were like 6,000 people that came through uh, Brian Baker brought in Dean Baker. Um, I can't remember the monk's name. Let's say Lo Song. Lo Song's going home with two thirds. He's doing most of the work. You're going to get a third. That's it. You're not getting halfsies anymore. So we finished it. Okay, right? You know, like, okay, it's fair. He was doing most of the work. He, he thought he'd have another person. I almost gave him three quarters, but you know, yeah, who's happy? And that was, you know, that was like a whole week, like 10 hours a day. Right. So we also have to be practical. Administration again, right? Had to go, had to happen. Oh, you have to compromise a little bit. Like, okay, you get, you get two thirds of the donations. Most of the arguments in monasteries are about what? That's true. No one argue. Why well, argue about doctrine? Why well, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, if you, no, because you know, like, yeah, people, you know, we have. So luckily, we're very good with money here, you know. But yeah, you know, resources. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so we have Matthew online. He had a question. Uh, if you still have your question, Matthew, please unmute. And take it away. Good morning, Rinpoche. Thank you so much for this wonderful teaching this morning. I wanted to ask if if this is how if what it's like is be able to find that order, that intelligence in the chaos. Is that wisdom? Um. Well, actually, you know, that's the right kind of question. The the um the wisdom is we we find the wisdom in it and in ourselves simultaneously. Something like that. So usually it's realizing like kind of been really stupid. <laughs> we don't like it that way. Usually we like to think, oh, I see how you know. I, I, you know, I see the way forward, you know, but usually the intelligence from our side is, oh, I overlooked this, you know, so we can do it this way. So it's just, just, it's just removing some kind of obstacle or something like that. Your beard's getting long. <laughs> I do. I want to pull your that's, beard. Yeah, that's the you know that's the the further north you get, the longer the beard goes. I know. You turn the end. <laughs> that. 
<laughs> you know, a Northwest person again. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, there's a sense of simultaneity, like, because that's interdependence, like, there's some kind of like, oh, you know, there's a meeting of the mind, something like that. Because if it's just like, I see the way forward and, you know, this, the mandala is still blocked, then we still have work to do, which is okay. We're done. Maybe we're done. No, done. Cooked. We're cooked. It's all good. Yeah. Ha la la. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice guest here, uh, my friend Douglas De Becker. Raise your hand. Hi. That's <laughs> great. Great to see you. So he flew in from it's North Carolina, right? Asheville to to be interviewed on TV about um, healing practices. So he's staying for lunch. Are you going to stay for lunch? Yeah. Okay, go please. Yeah. So in, in a mandala, you have a center. Yeah, you you need the we need they can't hear you uh, remotely. For, yeah. I, so in, in a in a in a mandala, there's a center. Yeah. Okay. So could you say something about hierarchy? Because it seems like this the center is kind of the choice. You're talking about choice and freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And so you make a choice that becomes the center yeah. then of your mandala. Yeah. Could you say something about that in relationship to kind of hierarchy of what's in the center of the mandala? Well, of course, if we're talking about center and edge, you know, those are still kind of relative states, of course. But uh, everything we do is kind of relative. So we do need to have some kind of uh, uh, center and edge, you know. So generally, we we want to be operating from a centered, balanced position, which is why we put so much emphasis on that and to see um, the energy uh, going out to the edge and then returning to the center. So in the inner work with doing, um, you know, working from a chakra point of view, uh, you know, we, we want to go out to our edge that uh, and kind of touch it so to speak but the edge is really kind of like a um hairpin turn right it's not really an edge you just go out and then that it pulls back but we want to experience that feeling of total expansion and then come back to the experience of total contraction and see those complementary uh see them as complementary uh, movements you know something like that you have another question you kind of touched upon it i i was just thinking in terms of if you see the importance of every point of the mandala as being equal, yeah, yet we still we still have a center, and so I, I think you what you covered it. that's that's yeah. So um, we we do have to bring things. Uh, they're all interconnected, but we do have to bring things to a point. So in Vajjana, we are. Um, you know, the hierarchy is transparent, let's put it that way. We, we want to emphasize like, you know, we, things have to, you know, we have to sew with just one needle and, you know, with a group, someone has to say, okay, we're gonna do this or not do this or something. That, that doesn't mean um, in a um, subservient kind of master dominator kind of way, but it's understanding that, uh, in each activity or moment, our energy is brought to a certain point like that, which um, is that feeling of being centered and at the same time. These are metaphors, you know, but so weird. But actually, if we do the inner yogas, it starts feeling that way. Um, and of course, in Tantra, so much is around, you know, generating, you know, our blissful energy and using that as a basic metaphor for how the mind works. Not really metaphor, though, is it? So, yeah, so um, things do have to, uh, the, the, everything is, <laughs> sorry, everything's equal, but um, uh, like everything in our body is equal, but, you know, we have to lead with our nose. 
<laughs> something like that. You know, the, the whole system has to be engaged to do to do this, right? Um, so we want to have that experience where the, the whole system is totally engaged, while at the same time, there's, there's a sense of lead. So a, a classical example is um, you, to pull a rug, you don't want to like uh, put your hand in the center, you, you know, you, you grab an edge, which is the point, and then the whole rug comes. So it's kind of paradoxical that way. You would think, oh, you 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 should grab the rug by the center and, and you know just pull it up like this, and that's where we misunderstand center and fringe. You know, we 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 it's paradoxical. It seems like the center should be in this way, but actually to, the center is on that edge, and you just pull it, and the whole thing comes. Doesn't make it. It's weird. We have to actually. You know, it's like martial arts. You actually have to try it and then then see. So that's why from Mahayana point of view, Tantra looks sneaky. <laughs> right? Because the Mahayana point of view generally is like, please just do the right thing and be, you know, can you just do the right thing? Just do the right thing, okay? Yeah. Just be open, compassionate, do, do the right thing. Moral arguments by themselves uh, are are going to be, you know, trying to pick up the rug that way. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, recently I said, you know, if somebody comes in that's dis too disruptive for the mandala to handle it, you, you want to get them out of the building and then kind of move them down the street, you know. So we did that very skillfully, and I was, I was an upset lady, and she got um, services, but... Um, very skillfully gave her over to Mary. <laughs> Mary is like she's like a, a, you know, like a meat grinder or a disposal. You know, just kind of put her in that direction. Bless her heart. <laughs> yeah. So it feels the the center is. Uh, uh, the way to center and balance the situation doesn't always seem like from a Mahayana point of view, which is Mahayana point of view. It's like, let's sit down and see what the problem is. Let's talk. It's okay. You're safe. You know, sometimes you you have to turn into the skid. And that's the that's the tantric idea of center like that. It's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should probably end here. This is great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Due to the merits That's of these virtuous actions, actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha, Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. state. May the supreme jewel of Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful chenrezi, tens and gatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the uproots of the teachings remain forever. May, may all my orders achieve happiness, happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary, temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Songkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losangdrapa, I make requests at your holy feet. So, yeah, now we need a new photo of me on the thing. So some people might think, oh, he's dissolving into Jalu, you know? So <laughs> I was like, no, that's just, you know, a pixelated photo. I'm not going into rainbow body that way, you know? I might be one of those guys that just shrinks, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> El Crofer announcement, Lama. I just want to invite everybody for sure on Wednesday. I'm doing a very special meditation with sound and uh, the singing bowls. I only do it every few months. And so um, people found that very helpful sometimes. It's kind of giving an idea of how you can use sound in your meditation and the advantages of that. So it's at six o'clock on Wednesday right here. Hey. So, um, and then the next Wednesday at six o'clock, guess she, uh, Sewang has accepted our request to teach meditation at six o'clock on Wednesday for the Wednesday group. So um, that's really important. Get him to sing and chant. Yes, he, yeah. he will. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll talk to him further so that uh, he, because yeah. it's such a rare opportunity. Yeah. I know Rinpoche mentioned this earlier, but we do have these little booklets or chat books that are available uh, during lunch. You have to explain what that is. What What is the book? The, the chat book? How many people know what a chat book is? No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> well, we can call it a booklet. Basically, it's a Dharma talk that's been printed out, right? So, so a religious tract. It's, it's called The Guru is Always With Us. And it really, um, if if you saw it in, in the roar by chance, it unpacks the student teacher relationship and would it, it provides insights into working with a teacher with a capital T teacher. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all the work you've put into that. Hours, a lot more. Suggested donation is ten dollars. Or a hundred, it can be you know. Suggested donation is a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, thank you. That's great. Uh, can we have um, processional music, please? Omo araya pasaya na aindi. Om araya pasaya na aindi. Omo.